Studio GPU, showing off a fantastic product called Mac Studio Pro, uh, real-time rendering on the GPU. So I'll pass them over to you over to these guys. Hi, I'm David Koenig, I'm CEO of Studio GPU. Uh, with me is Yoni Koenig, who's our, our chief scientist. Um, Studio GPU is a software development uh, house out of uh, Los Angeles. Uh, our product is uh, Mock Studio Pro. And Mock. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Mock Studio Pro is a real time filing and compositing system for doing lighting, materials, camera work, uh, as well as final rendering. Uh, processes that currently probably take you anywhere from. Uh, minutes, if you're lucky, to potentially hours and final frames can be done in a uh, second, and in some cases, sub-second. Um, the implications of that, from our point of view, are quite large in terms of actually giving artists, uh, or the key stakeholders, if you want, in CG production, uh, whether they are artists, uh, studio managers, or for that matter, IT folks, uh, the ability to, uh, to really have more control and work in a less complex, if you want, technical environment than it is now. Uh, so on the creative side, on the art side, you, uh, we give you ways to spend more time with the image. Um, on the business side, we actually allow for uh, increased efficiencies uh, and possibly way of uh, maintaining production flows and getting to the point you need to get to uh, more quickly. And on the IT side, in some ways, we take away the pressure from the render farm which is currently, I'm sure, for everybody here, the biggest bottleneck in anything they do, uh, and move some of that onto the desktop with the ability to really see things um, as they are at all times. Um, you know, in software, we call it being WYSIWYG, which means uh, what you see is what you get. Um, and that's really our philosophy, is to give uh, a viewport that uh, allows the artists and everybody to see what they are going to get immediately. I'll pass it to you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right. So I just want to pick up where David is leaving off uh, and talk a little about, we, keep, we talk a lot about workflow. Uh, what I'm going to present to you, uh, hopefully I'll have enough time to hit all the key issues here. I'm going to present it in a very linear way. The thing to understand is that Mock Studio Pro uh, is nonlinear in, in several dimensions. So when we talk about workflow, is that the normal uh, issues of dependency between shading, and lighting, and rendering, and compositing, compositing I'll break into funny vowel sounds that you'll see off the are eliminated so that we have a nonlinear workflow between the photographs. <coughs> so uh, for us, rendering is an accumulation of what the materials are doing, what the lighting is doing, uh, and what the camera is seeing. So the camera is always reading uh, uh, raw pixels. It is always internally high dynamic range. And then there's various uh, mapping, tone mapping uh, techniques for getting the final pixels, unless, of course, you have a 10-bit monitor or going into a 10-bit system. So I'm going to go right into it, and hopefully we'll cover it. OK, so I have a scene loaded here uh, that's actually from, uh, was given to us uh, from a, a client. It's a 750-frame sequence, so it's exported directly into Mock Studio from Maya. Uh, we support all possible animations that can be done in Maya or Mac. They're brought in here natively very easily, uh, either through a variety of, uh, well, I won't, go on, I won't dig into the animation expert, we'll stay away from that. Um, and uh, the monster throws uh, the princess into the room, etc., and she's uh, very upset and scared, but I'll go right into our last frame over here. So we're just looking at it in the kind of preview mode. One of the first things I'm going to do is turn on the subdivision system. Any surface in Mock Studio Pro can have various levels of subdivisions. It's simply a tag on the object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just a quick render over here with everything turned on, I believe. Um, and that's a render for us. I'll actually up res the AO as well. So I'm just going to break down that image a little bit and talk about what we're seeing there. So just again, I'm turning on essentially the, the passes. Uh, the artist has constant control over all the passes that are happening in Mock Studio. So I'm just going to go and turn some of them on and off so you see. So just basic, here's your spec path in the image. Uh, this is diffuse uh, with, no, uh, with no ambient or etc. So these passives, as I'm turning them on and off, essentially allow you to see what's constructing that image. And I just turned a few of them. The idea here is that as you build lighting layers and systems, you can create your own passives as well. So this is what we mean that it steps into composite. So the, the 3D artist can actually see exactly how the compositor is going to get their data very, very early on. 
Uh, let's look at some of these other things here. This is the AO pass. I can isolate it and look at it in a minute. I'll start editing all of these. Uh, uh, illumination, uh, which uh, essentially is uh, the luminance value at each pixel. Uh, this is, of course, your normal pass. Uh, so here is your material ID. So there's all these things that are available instantly, including what you, I just passed through with the uh, shadow mask, in fact. Let's look at the AO a second over here. Just to show you what, how the power of this is really represented. So uh, oops. let's uh, look at our character over here. Uh, and I'm looking at the AO at a lower sample right now just so I can work with it and even accelerate it. So I can actually grab my AO slider any time and actually design the length of those rays on how the object is going to be uh, red. I can up, change the samples up between them just so I can have a clearer view. Uh, and mind you, when you finally, uh, at final render, you can put the samples at much higher quality. So, uh, just to show you how cool that is a second, I'm just going to grab this over here in this mode. Let me show you how nice it is to actually be able to see <laughs> your ambient occlusion responding completely live in your scene. Um, let me move it back down. There's basic uh, transform, orient, and scale controls here. Uh, so let's go to the top of this scene a second. You have been texted. <laughs> Perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, get to the top of the scene here. And I'm going to turn to show you how simple it is to turn the AO on something in here. So we'll just uh, open up this object view over here. Uh, and I'll grab uh, the cell wall. We'll turn on the wall. And where's the, the door? There's our door. Uh, so now, basically, the, the, oh, the henchman. I'm going to turn it on the henchman as well. We'll turn it on the other monster. So you can see I can just essentially some, tell someone to be inside the AO system or not. Uh, now, this is a really important uh, thing to understand. We're, everything you're seeing is actually powered and happening on the GPU. Uh, and it's not, these are not like blue black boxes or GPU shaders and processes. We're updating everything live all the time, which means we can actually keyframe any one of these things. It's not like any other .fs shader that exists outside anywhere else. These things are being essentially simulated live for you. I'm using the word simulated in quotes because the idea is that the GPU is always thinking about you, what you're doing. So what's happening is the artist is actually playing it like an instrument. So if, that, if that's a metaphor, we can hold on to. Okay. Uh, Excuse me, can I interrupt for a second? Please. Is there a direct question? Is what we're looking at here a real-time ray tracer? Are you looking at a real-time ray No, you're not looking at a real-time ray tracer. You're not. Everything you're, you're seeing is actually happening in raster and rasterized space. This is running currently, the version you're looking at is running in DirectX 9 on a, I think, a XP machine. Uh, excuse me, internally right now we do have a DX11 version. That's compute shade, uh, uh, compute shade version where we do have ray tracing. Happening in real time. Happening in real time, actually. So this is the current product that's out in the market. It's being used in a number of studios internationally right now. Uh, I mean, I'd rather, you can go to our website and actually see where this tool is being produced, what we're using it, etc. But the answer is no, it is not ray tracing right now. What I was going to do was going to animate the AO a second. I was just going to show you something. That anything in here, I can create keys. So you notice as I create keys in here, uh, I can key all of this. So this is not a kind of big tree process. This is actually happening live. You'll see it if you watch this uh, slider up here, up here that's showing you this. Uh, uh, calculation on the normals, um, you'll see that as I move the timeline, that that's actually adjusting live, the, uh, the AO animation, so you can preview it. This is true of any function in Mock Studio. Any shader, any material, any light, all can be keyframed and animated. All right, let's go back here. David's pointing at the watch. I guess I'm sticking too long. Um, all right, let me just go back and put a an AO level I'm more happy with, or happier with. I'll do that, and I'll key that, and I'll just snap this back here. All right, so, uh, right. <coughs> Let's look at the AO second. This is really fun to do, just to show you just how nice it is. I'll just play it directly with the temperature of that AO live. This is very important to see just how that blend is happening in control or preview. All right. 